everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Topaz Studio 2 again. This episode, I'm calling Exploring Presets inside of Topaz Studio 2. They are super powerful. We're going to look at presets. I'm going to show you how to save your own presets. I'm going to explain to you how they can uh, speed up your workflow, how they can help you if you're having problems taking your image into a certain direction. They are really cool. So, you know, watch this whole tutorial. I think you're going to learn a lot. Without any further ado, let's get started. We're starting right out here in uh, Topaz Studio 2, which I like to refer to as my creative toolbox. Now, today we're going to uh, be exploring presets. Now, when we go to the filters, all these different filters in here have a set of presets to them, and they're very, very powerful. For instance, let me click on Basic Adjustment. And you'll find your presets at the very bottom of the right-hand side of the interface. See where it says Presets? And if you'll click this drop-down, it opens up, and you'll see you have a bunch of really cool presets in here, and you get different looks and different things like that. And we're going to explore these. And today I thought we'd look at some of my favorite filters inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2 and look at some really cool presets. And then I'll show you how to create your own presets, which will really kind of speed up your workflow. This uh, basic adjustment is one of my favorite filters inside of Topaz Studio 2, so let's explore some of these presets first. I want to point out first off that naming your uh, presets, especially when you make your own presets, it's very important to give them a good name that you'll really understand what that preset is doing. For instance, like this first one is called uh, Decrease Highlights. This is actually one of the presets I made. So if I need an image where I need to decrease highlights, I can come into my presets and click on this and it'll decrease the highlights. Uh, let's click on this one called uh, Bleach Bypass. And this gives you a more stylized look here. Now if you decided, hey I really like this, this is really cool for the direction I want to take my image, you would just click apply and that would apply that preset. But first let's just uh, explore some of these presets. Uh, for instance, uh, here's one called Brighter, which will simply make your image a little bit brighter. Here's Cool and Dark. So let's examine some of these. Now here's Darker. Let's the colors pop out a little bit and pretty cool. Uh, here's one called Reduce Saturation, Saturation Boost, Toy Camera, if you want to simulate that toy camera effect, like a cheap plastic lens on a on a on a what we would call a toy camera. A lot of people like to get that kind of effect on their images if they're looking for a more artistic looking type of image. Here's one called Warmer. So you can take your image in many different directions. Here's one called Warm Morning. So pretty cool. But say we end up going with one here that we like, like say for instance, this one called Darker. So let's click Darker. Now to accept that preset, all you need to do is click Apply. And once you click Apply, that preset will be applied. And you'll notice here, this uh, preset has pulled your exposure back. It's increased your clarity a little bit. It's increased your highlights. It hasn't touched your shadows and it hasn't touched your black level or white level or your saturation or temperature or tint, but it's just simply darkened the image. And then from there, you can go ahead and change things. You might say, you know what? I want my shadows a little bit darker so you can move the shadows to the left. But see, it's a nice starting point. But this will, you know, presets will really help you get your image started and moving along. And it'll, it'll actually, in my opinion, speed up your workflow to really help you out, especially if you're not sure which direction to take an image. Let's keep exploring. So let me go ahead and delete the basic adjustment. Let's go to the next filter uh, called Brightness Contrast. You might say, oh, that's not a real fun filter. But you know what? This is a filter you'll use a lot when you're in uh, working on your images. Let's say you added a filter and now it looks a little bit too light. So you would simply use the Brightness Contrast filter to darken it up a bit or it lost some contrast you might want to add some contrast. And look, we have some cool presets in here. Here's one called Black and White Negative. So it kind of inverts the image. Pretty nice. Bright and cheery. Brighter. Color pop. So it doesn't have a real exciting name, the Brightness Contrast Filter, but look at these presets. There's some really cool presets in here. Dark and Dramatic. 
And so again, this will really help you maybe take your image to a new direction when you start playing around with some of these presets. You'll say, hmm, I really like what that's doing to my image. Here's one called high contrast or low contrast. And again, when you get one you like, say, I like this dark and dramatic one right here. You can just click apply and apply that filter. Now, see this slider right here? Now, I want to explain something about this slider. It was a little confusing to me at first. If you take this slider, it's the opacity slider to the filter. You can pull it back like this and say, you know what? I like this effect, but I like it not quite as strong. So I may want to pull the opacity back on it. Now, you may think when I click apply here, the image will look just like it does right now when I click apply. But watch, notice the image change. It, gets dark, it will get darker again. And this brought me a little bit of confusion because you can see it's darker again, right? That particular uh, slider in the preset kind of lets you see what will happen to your image when you reduce your opacity of that particular filter. It doesn't actually apply it when you click apply. You will have to come and take this opacity slider and pull it back if you want to ease up in that effect. But again, it lets you see what effect will take place if you pull that opacity slider back. And that brought me a little bit of confusion, so I wanted to point that out to you so you don't get tripped up by that slider and say, hey, wait, I thought I, I, thought I uh, took some of that effect away, but it looks strong now. That's what's happening there. Let's keep exploring. Let me go ahead and delete this filter right here. Now, again, I'm not going to show you all the presets, but I just want to get you excited about these presets and how cool they can be and how they can really help you. So let's go to another one of my favorite filters called Curves. And let's see what those presets look like. Okay, so we have one called Decrease Contrast. So if you need a con to decrease your contrast a little bit, that's a good one for you. If you need to drop your highlights, um, click on this one, like this flower right here before. If you'll notice right there, see how it's a little blown out? It looks a little bit light, this flower right here. And now with that drop highlights, it kind of tames that down. So that's cool. Here's one called Increase Blue. Here's Increase Contrast. And then you have some more stylized looks like uh, Red Overdrive, uh, Slate Blue Tone, or a Slight Contrast Bump. So that's pretty cool. So that is the Curves. Let me go ahead and delete that and move on to another filter. I think I use the Precision Contrast filter in probably every edit I ever do. So it's obviously one of my favorites. So let's look at its presets. Okay, so if you need to balance out your image, balance. And remember I told you, naming your uh, presets is very important to help you understand what they're doing. So balance is a good name. It, to it totally balances out this image very nicely. Here's one called Brighter, makes it a little bit brighter. And how about Color Detail? Make those color details pop a little bit. Nice one, especially for like a garden scene like this. Uh, here's a Contrast Boost. That's a little over the top, but remember you have this opacity slider that you can kind of see what it's going to look like, like if you pull the opacity back. Okay. And if you'll notice right here where it says Precision Contrast, that's the actual filter itself. And when I adjust this, you'll see that's the opacity getting pulled back. But remember, after I hit Apply, it'll go back up to 100%. Very important. So let's try Details. If you just want to bring out the overall details, there's that one. You want a high dynamic range image. There you go. And uh, let's see what else we got. You want a, uh, just to bring the details out in the little things. Click on that right there. Because you'll remember, if I click apply here, remember this has a micro contrast adjustment. So it's really pulling that micro up just to bring those little details out. And it's also working with low and medium. It's not really messing around with any of these other controls right here. Now let's go ahead and go into some of the more uh, stylistic type uh, filters. For instance, let's go to abstraction. I'll click on presets and let's take a look at some of these. We have one called cartoon. That's fun. And don't forget we have the opacity slider that we can pull back. Here's color variations. Here's uh, simply simplified. I like that a lot. Very painterly. Here's one called uh, subtle simplify. 
That one's really nice. I like that look right there. I've used this type of look on many images here, and here's one called Very Simple, where it really pulls out most of the detail and just leave, leaves you with uh, blocks of color, which could be a nice base for a uh, impressionistic painterly type image. Let's move on. Uh, let's try uh, one of my favorites called Impression. And let's take a look at some of the presets here. And here we have one called Degas. I think that's the way you pronounce it. It's a famous painter. Degas Dancers. Uh, really nice. Here's a charcoal, like drawing type effect here. Here's one called Colored Pencil. That's really beautiful for this image. And remember, this is a starting point. Then we'd go ahead and add contrast or take contrast away and add detail, subtract detail, do all kinds of things to it, depending whatever flavor we want this image to go to. Uh, let's try just straight oil painting here. Nice. And if I zoom in, you can see the nice canvas on there. Really, really cool. And here's an oil pastel. Mm, that's beautiful. And here's a perfect pastel. Imagine a perfect pastel, but there it is. That is really beautiful. I like that as well. Here's one called photo painting. Kind of fun. And how about soft strokes? Mm, that looks really nice. And I do like the way the canvas is really shown through on that one. Really, really a nice look. We could spend hours just going through these presets, but today I really wanted to show you the value of the presets and show you how cool the presets are and how you can incorporate them into your workflow. But now, instead of keep going on and looking at more presets, let me show you how to uh, create your uh, own preset. And we'll do that by uh, altering one of these presets. So say we like this preset right here, and we go ahead and we click Apply. Now, we can see all the different effects that are tied to it. Uh, for instance, like the brush it's using. It's using this brush right here, Type 12. But what if we say, you know what, I want to try a different brush on it, like this brush right here. And I might say, okay, that's kind of cool. I like it. I might say, what if I change the number of strokes from high to medium? Okay, it gives me a little more uh, abstract look, and that's getting really pretty. And then I might say, I want to come down to the texture and say, you know what, I really like that texture. Let me zoom in here, but it's a little bit too strong. So let's take the texture strength and start to pull it back. Just ease up on it a little bit, like there. All right, and say, I like that. I want to save it as a preset. All you have to do, see this icon right here next to the reset icon? Click on this icon and give that preset a name. Like, let me call this one, how about old painting for lack of a better title probably not a good title and i'll probably change it later but for now i'm going to name it this you could give it a description as well but i'm just going to click ok and now i saved it it is that simple so now i could come here and um, let's go ahead and reset this right here reset it back and now let's come down to presets and you will find it in here old painting right here now notice one thing your presets that you make will have this little pencil mark beside them. So you can come in here and alter the name or change the name or delete them. You'll notice the ones that you have not created, you can't delete them. They are part of the uh, Topaz Studio 2 program. So right there. So now if I click Old Painting, there's that effect applied to the image right there. And now all I have to do if I say, yeah, I like that, click apply, and then I can come and alter it and work from there. But that's how easy it is to save presets, and I highly recommend that you do that. Well, there it is. We explored presets inside of Topaz Studio 2. They can, they can speed up your workflow. They can help you if you're kind of stuck and if you're not sure which direction to take an image, that's great. Or if there's certain uh, filters that you use a lot and there's a certain look that you like, like I like to use the precision contrast and precision detail filters a lot. A lot of times I'm doing just certain things with those filters. I can save that out as a preset. And then instead of adjusting it each time manually, I can just click on that preset and get me there quicker. So that's what I mean by speeding up the workflow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. 
I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.